Marine safety history. Thousands of colonial merchantmen and fishermen died in the chilly North Atlantic off the coast of the 13 American colonies. King George III of England didn't seem to care. By 1772, frustrated Rhode Islanders set fire to His Majesty's revenue ship Gatsby. The colonies united in 1776. American merchant mariners went to war as privateers. Privateers far exceeded the Navy in numbers of ships and victories. Now independent, the United States would need peaceful tax-paying maritime trades. Treasury Secretary Hamilton, a former ship agent from tiny St. Croix Island, began by establishing the U.S. Lighthouse Service in 1789, then the Revenue Cutter Service in 1790. Hamilton charged Revenue Cutter officers to remember their countrymen are free men. He ensured cutters remained active and ready to assist American mariners while enforcing the laws. The Revenue Cutter Service chased away French pirates in the 1798 Quasi-War. In 1812, American privateers once again prevailed over the British, confirming American independence and the patriotism of citizen sailors. After the war came new safety initiatives, including lightships and a focus on maritime life-saving. By the Civil War, steam propelled revenue cutters. A separate steamboat inspection service had been established by 1838. Despite disastrous boiler explosions, steam replaced sail for both commerce and the revenue cutter service. Turn of the century revenue cutters, men like Sumner Kimball, the life-saving service, and the lighthouse service were ready to welcome in the Titanic era, but she didn't make it. Congress responded by creating the U.S. Coast Guard in 1915 and the first Coast Guard Captain of the Port in 1917. The Coast Guard's International Ice Patrol minimized the iceberg threat, but the Morro Castle tragedy of 1930 prompted the need for a Safety of Life at Sea Convention. Then the winds of war re-emerged. Coast Guard Commandant Russell Wasey and Maritime Commission Chairman Emery Land established the U.S. Maritime Service in 1936. While the Maritime Commission built ships, the Coast Guard recruited and trained merchant mariners on training ships like the American Mariner. Then, in 1942, the new Maritime Administration assumed the training mission so the Coast Guard could fight the war in the Pacific. Today, the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy and the U.S. Coast Guard Academy graduate officers ready to continue a unique service to the country that began with the American Revolution. I'm Rear Admiral Jim Watson, Director of Prevention Policy, U.S. Coast Guard.